What up, game development gangsters? The sexy glasses are back, so do you like them? Do you think I'm more sexy with the glasses or not? Let me know, I need to know that. Put that in the comment below. Anyways, I'm back with my devlog. I'm basically finished with my game. Probably we have published it so far. I don't know, I'm not sure. Check the link below, I will put it down if the game is published so you can download it, you can play it. I will earn some cash, you need to feed me or I will die. Anyways, what I was doing in the past few days was optimizing my game for mobile devices because a lot of you guys, and I know that because you know, you, you, want, you are killing me with a oh, mobile game, mobile game, mobile game. So yeah, okay, here, here is a mobile game. Anyways, when it comes to mobile devices, you really need to optimize your game because it's not the same when you run your game on, you know, $1,000, $1,000, yeah, $1,000 uh, laptop or PC and when you run it on a mobile phone because, well, you know, phones are, you know, weaker. So let's get into the stuff that I optimize because there are some they are some basic things that a lot of people make mistakes on. I see this all the time and this will hurt your performance, you know, a lot. So the first thing that I had issue is I use this script to basically make my game objects wobble. What, the, what do I mean by that? Well, here, when I run the game, you will see now here in the main menu, how these lemons are wobbling. You can see this at the bottom. So these lemons and the background, hopefully I can zoom in, but I don't think I can, it zooms here. Anyways, you see the lemons over here, they're wobbling and also this yellow background and blue background. So the script does that. The issue that I had over here is that this script was taking 0 0.2 milliseconds of the time needed to draw that or execute that frame. Now, how do I know that? Of course, I profiled my game on my device on Unity and Unity has a guide for that. I will put a link down in the description so that you can find how to, you know, connect your mobile device on Unity and, you know, profile directly. Anyways, Milliseconds in the profile, you will see that, which accounts to how many milliseconds it takes for your mobile device to render that whole scene in that single frame. So now you will say 0 0.2 milliseconds is not a lot, and it's not. But when you take that into consideration, that is done every frame, and if you have 60 frames in a second, that 60 multiplied with 0 0.2 you can automatically see, I'm not good at math and I'm a programmer, <laughs> but you can see how much time will it take your mobile device to render that scene, which can, you know, get piled up quickly. And your game will go quickly from 60 frames to 10 frames or five frames or zero frames per second. And that simple line of code was this. Over here in the update, you saw that wobble effect. So there, you know, like joggling. I have this vector three offset that I'm using here. Calculate how much to offset the cube from its base position using Perlin noise. I'm not going to get into this. This is not a tutorial about what MathF is and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, I'm using this to calculate and every single time in the update function, which is called once per frame, and we see that over here with this comment, it is creating a new vector three and then assigning all of these variables. Simply by removing this vector three from the update and putting it over here, it was those 0 0.2 milliseconds were gone. So just by doing this single thing, creating a vector three offset over here, declaring it above the start or below the class and not using it in the update, it saved me 0 0.2 milliseconds of my game running. So don't put, don't put creating new objects in the update function. So when you want to create something, no matter what it is, especially don't use instantiate in the update function because update function is called, as you can see, every frame. If you have 60 frames in a second, it is called 60 times. 60 times in a single second, you're creating new objects. That is a lot on a mobile device. Even on high-end devices, that is a lot. And you want to optimize mainly for the lower end and then for the higher end devices. So make sure that Everything is cached, so to say. Everything that you need, like vector trees, transforms, even main camera and whatnot, cache it over here. So declare a variable and then in the start function, you can get a reference to that if it's a main camera, for example, or if in this case is a vector three offset every single time. Now, when we calculate it over here, it will have a new value. So yeah, there you go. The next pain in the ass that I had in my game was a timer. And if you type, on Google or on YouTube, how to create a timer in Unity, you will find a gazillion tutorials online showing you how to create a timer in Unity. And every single one of those tutorials are using text, 
So UI text and they are using update function to, you know, set the value to that text. As you can see over here in the update, I'm using time remaining minus equals time dot delta time. And then I'm setting the timer text to be equal to time and plus the time remaining. Now, there are a few issues with this here. First thing that I'm calling in the update again, and we just talked about what update is. So update is deadly. Update is deadly. If you don't handle it very well, your game is not going to run smoothly. So in the update function, you need to make sure that every code you put inside is taking zero milliseconds to run. And this over here is an issue because every single time you call time, plus time remaining. So basically you're concatenating two strings. This is creating one string and creating another string every single time. So two strings, this is creating every single frame. If you have 60 frames in a second, it's creating two new objects every single frame. And this right here, it's not taking a lot of milliseconds, but it is taking a lot of memory. So every single time you will see that GC alloc so garbage collection allocation basically the memory that your game is using when you're profiling your game again link is in the description below if you want to you know see how to profile your game the memory that your game is taking if it piles up the system so android or ios depending on where your game is you know running will kill your game because it's allocating too much memory and uh, yeah the system cannot take it and it's going to kill your game so this right here is doing just that and as I said, every single tutorial online that you will find when it comes to this, it will show you to do it this way. Of course, don't get me wrong, this depends on the platform that you are creating your game. You can get away with this on PC or console, but mobile devices are different. So for mobile devices, you need to optimize as much as you can. What I did over here is simply, I didn't use the update function. Instead, I've used a coroutine, as you can see over here. A coroutine with a while loop, that will run infinitely. And over here, every single time, I am yield return wait time, which is, as you can see, one second. Now, of course, coroutine also takes a lot of GC, so garbage collection allocation, but I'm calling this coroutine only once. Over here, I'm calling it. So in the start, timer start, I'm calling it. And over here, you will see time remaining equals initial time. Timer is running is true. Start the coroutine, start timer. I also have over here to stop the coroutine. That is when the player dies. That's another story. But anyways, what happens over here is that I only call this coroutine once and then it runs forever until the timer runs down because of the while loop. And every single time in the while loop, I'm calling return wait time, which is one second. And this will allocate memory, but it will allocate it every few frames, which the application can handle. And I used, I used a profiler to you know check that. And also, by the way, when you are profiling your game, you also need to know that the profiler will take memory and performance from the mobile device itself. So what you need to do is use third-party plugins. And there, there are a few of these. And a few of these few are FPS display that I have over here. And also amazing tool called Graphy. And I will put the links to both of these in the description below. So both of these links will be in the description below. And these are free, by the way, and they will display frames per second on your device directly. You don't have to connect it on your computer or Unity, just port the game and it will display that. And you will see how much memory your game takes and so on and so forth. So even though I'm using here a coroutine, it is running smoothly because I'm only calling it once. If you're calling the coroutine multiple times, it will also take a lot of memory. So keep that in mind. The next issue that I had in my game was draw calls. Now, as you already know, draw calls can kill your game. This is how many times or how many draw calls does Unity need to do or CP or GP, whoever, I don't care, you know, but somebody has to do that work. So how many draw calls it takes for them to draw that whole scene or whatnot? The more you have them, the more performance heavy your game will be, especially on mobile devices. Now, one thing that I want to say right away, because all of us, me included and everybody else, searches online directly how to tackle that problem. Don't believe everything you see online. What do I mean by this? Well, I saw on a couple of forums and a couple of answers, you know, one of them was telling, okay, you cannot even have 80 draw calls per frame on a one gigabyte memory device. So one gigabyte RAM, not memory, you know, like system storage memory. That is not true. I'm using a low end device. I'm using some tablet. I don't know with this one right here. Let me just show you that tablet. Okay. This Samsung tablet, as you can see, and this is a low end device. 
This device is like from 2013. It runs on KitKat 4.4. It has 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, but I have tested the game. It has like 200 draw calls and the game works. But how did I get to 200 draw calls from, I don't know, 400, I believe, because if you, if you pay attention over here, this is my level. And I have a lot of elements over here. I mean, this is level one. I have 80 levels in my game currently. We will add more levels. But, you know, as you can see, there are a lot of levels. What I did is I used something called GPU instancing. I will put a link down in the description to so you can check it out on Unity's website. But basically, you can take, you see this cube material? This is the material that all of my cubes over here are using basically all of these things that you see in the level and what I did is simply over here in the inspector you see you have enable GPU instancing just check that checkbox and there you go you will go down from 100 draw calls to 10 draw calls this is if the elements are using the same material so all of these elements that you see now in my level are using the same material, which means now Unity will, you know, basically draw them from one draw call instead of, you know, using a gazillion draw calls. There are, of course, a lot of other solutions. You can use static batching, but static batching has its own issues. So GPU instancing is better. Even Unity now prefers that and they recommend it. There are also paid solutions like Mesh Baker. I'll put a link down to that asset. It is a little expensive, around $70, I believe, but that asset is amazing. You can basically take everything in your level like everything here you see and you can create one mesh out of that so instead of having over here I don't know let's say 100 elements and 100 elements need to be rendered in my scene it will only render them as a one element which will drastically lower the number of draw calls that you have in your game but that comes with a few other issues which is the last problem that I faced in my project, which is the size. So the APK build size, when you build the APK, you want to publish it on Google Play, upload it online, how many storage, how much storage memory is that going to take? Well, using that mesh baker, my project had a lot around 127 megabytes and you will say, okay, 127 megabytes is not a lot, which is true. It's not a lot, but this game has 80 levels. Out of those 80, so my 80 levels are taking like 80 gigabytes of memory. So 80 levels are taking 80 gigabytes, uh, excuse me, 80 megabytes of memory. Now imagine if I have 800 levels, that's multiplied with, you know, with 10. And if you multiply 80 with 10, that's 800 megabytes. So almost a gigabyte for a game that's not like RPG, it's not, you know, MOBA game and whatnot. That's a lot. So... What I did is first, I took my sprites and if I go over here inside of the sprites and we all saw this, inside the sprites, if you select it, you will see over here in the inspector at the bottom, you can set the maximum size. So this maximum size determines the actual size of that file in the APK build. So currently you can see this image is at four megabytes. I had all of these images. So all of these images, I had them as separate. So you see here, I have my level, level images, backgrounds and diamonds and whatnot. They were all separate images, which basically, you know, had or took around 20 megabytes of memory of my game. So what I did is I put them all in a sprite sheet and there you go. So now this everything that was, you know, like 30 megabytes of memory now is four megabytes. And also this mesh baker was taking like 60 megabytes. So I removed it and I'm using, you know, my own assets that I have over here, which lowered the, you know, lowered the size, the total size at, I don't know, 40 megabytes or so. But anyways, as I said, there are fantastic solutions like paid ones, but pay attention if they will contribute to the size, overall size of your APK and so on and so forth. But yeah, anyways, uh, this is all for this devlog that I had. And I did it a little bit differently from the other two devlogs. More are coming. I probably published my game so far. So check the link below to, you know, download the game, play it. So I can earn a little bit bread and, you know, I can eat and stuff, pay my bills. And I will, you know, continue living on this world. But anyways, also, if you want to learn how to make games, link is in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.